Harvey Weinstein has been granted an appeal. It is a big and surprising legal victory for the disgraced Hollywood producer, and it opens up the possibility that his 2020 conviction for sexual assault and third-degree rape could actually be overturned. Today, New York State's highest appeals court agreed to hear Weinstein's appeal. This after a five-judge panel in the same court initially upheld the film mogul's conviction. That was back in June. But Chief Judge Danette DeFiori reversed that decision and granted Weinstein motion to file an appeal. Oral arguments for a retrial are not likely to happen until the winter of 2023, according to Weinstein's attorney, Arthur Ayadala, who told News Nation in a statement, quote, we are grateful that the judge acknowledges the legal issues and we are hopeful that the entire court will find that Mr. Weinstein did not receive a fair trial and deserves to be retried. Weinstein's counsel argued that the judge in his trial should not have allowed testimony from three women who accused the producer of sexual misconduct but whose claims did not lead to any criminal charges. Weinstein's lawyers also argued that a juror who wrote a novel about predatory older men should have been disqualified. Weinstein, who was sentenced to 23 years in the New York case and is currently behind bars in Los Angeles awaiting trial on sexual assault charges in a separate case, reacted to today's news in a statement to ABC, saying, quote, I am innocent of these charges, and I am so grateful to my attorneys for working hard and smart on this. Their hard work will help me prove my innocence in the end. I look forward to this opportunity to be heard by the New York Court of Appeals. The 2020 conviction of Harvey Weinstein was a landmark moment for the Me Too movement, as it had been historically difficult for women to obtain justice against male celebrity predators. So what happens next for Me Too in light of this very shocking decision? And can Weinstein actually get his case tossed out completely? Let's bring in Brian Buckmeyer. He is a felony trial attorney and a host uh, on the Law and Crime Network. Brian, thank you so much for being here. First question, how does this play out in the now? Because I know that Weinstein is in jail in L.A. Uh, waiting on trial there. So I assume he's going to stay behind bars at this point, right? Absolutely. Well, the way it typically works is that each state kind of wants to get their pound of flesh, so to speak. And so since he's already been sent from New York, uh, where he was convicted, as you pointed out, to California, California's going to say, I want my issues to be resolved before I send him back to New York. So it's more likely than not he's going to have his California case, and then whenever that is resolved, then he'll get to um, tackle his New York case. And that's probably why uh, oral arguments are pushed back so far. What do you make, Brian, of the legal argument here? First of all, saying that the two women should not have been allowed to testify because they didn't have any criminal charges connected to their situations. And then also this juror uh, who wrote a book about predatory older, uh, older men. Do you think they have a good argument for a new trial? Good, I don't know if I'd go as far as saying good, but I definitely think they have a strong leg to stand on. When it comes to the women who did not have charges associated with their testimony, basically what the defense is saying is these women, their, their testimony was more prejudicial than probative, that Harvey Weinstein was convicted not based on the evidence, but based on the bad feelings that the jurors must have had uh, towards him because of this insurmountable evidence that was piled on top of the actual charges. That's a pretty decent argument. The thing they're going to run up against that the prosecutors want to try to hammer home is what's called harmless error, where they say, yeah, maybe this person shouldn't testify or that person shouldn't have, but the mountain of evidence against him him shows that he is guilty. When it comes to the juror, I don't think that's going to have the case get thrown out, but maybe remanded back for a retrial. That, I think, may be a victory here, not an overall uh, reversal of the conviction. Oh, my gosh. You just think about a retrial and all of this. It's crazy to even think about in New York. What I always find fascinating uh, about the court process and about appeals is even a guy like Harvey Weinstein, where we, from watching this on the outside, have seen all the evidence and dozens and dozens of women. And even if we know that he's guilty, these procedural issues that come up in court uh, can get everything thrown out. Absolutely. And, and, and what it comes down to is something even greater than the crimes themselves. It's what's the criminal justice system in which you want to operate in? Do we want to operate in a system where all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted? And when we say that someone is guilty, we know they are guilty because they went through one of the best systems in the country. Or do we want to say, you know what, we kind of sort of maybe know he's guilty, so it doesn't matter if we don't cross all the T's and dot all the I's. And so while we can all sit here and say, hey, 
right. probably know he's guilty. The system needs to know that it's done it correctly. But it just seems like when you're a rich guy like Harvey Weinstein who can hire the best lawyers and you can get this cavalry of lawyers to look over every little thing and you've got the money to do that, there's always going to be something that you could find. That's what it seems like to me. Absolutely. And, and I think it, it's, I mean, the, the issue is one is that some people have the resources and the ability to do what you're saying and, and to use the system as it should be or is designed to be used. Um, the other issue is that there are people um, who don't have the resources. And so it's kind of an equity thing in terms of why do some get access to justice or the use of the justice that others don't? What do you think, just real quick, this means big picture for the Me Too movement? Because um, obviously there are women who are going to be watching this who have had interactions with Harvey Weinstein that find this development uh, devastating, and rightfully so. Yeah, I, I think, and not speaking for them, the only analogy I can think of, this is a marathon. The, the Me Too movement is, is an absolute marathon, and I think when Harvey Weinstein was convicted and I was there during the trial, you saw this kind of exhale for many women and the Me Too movement and said, hey, we've made it through this marathon. We, we got there. We, we ran the race and we won in a way that, as you said, was never seen before. Now this is like saying, well, there's a second leg of the marathon. And I think what you're going to see is the strength and determination of those within the Me Too movement and those who are seeking justice against Harvey Weinstein, maybe dig a little deeper and keep running. Uh, the unfortunate issue here is that the system needs to make sure they get it correctly. And those victims have to maybe run a little bit longer to find justice. Yeah, it makes sense. Brian Buckmeyer, uh, thank you so much for coming on with us tonight to discuss. My pleasure. Have a good night, Brian. You too. Okay. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.